Welcome back to another episode of This Must Be Heard, a recurring podcast featuring discussions of Delaware County Community College's events, achievements, and initiatives. In this special episode, New Media Lab co-executive producers Raven Amaro and LaShonda Stevens interview two DCCC graduates who majored in communication. The alumni share their experiences at DCCC and what it's like working in the communication field today. Enjoy the show! Hi, my name is Raven Amaro and welcome back to another episode of This Must Be Heard. Today I'll be interviewing Ed Betts, who is currently working as a paginator for the Media News Group and graduated from Delaware County Community College in 2010 with an Associates in Communication. He then moved on to complete a Bachelor's in Communication from Temple University and then completed a Master's Degree in Media Studies, also from Temple University. Ed, thank you so much for being here today, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. So to start off, I'm wondering, how was your experience at DCCC, and do you feel like it benefited you in both furthering your education and in your current job or past jobs? My experience at DCCC was a positive experience. I used it as a chance to ease my way from high school to college. I was able to get the full in-class college experience in a slightly larger environment at a much more affordable rate. It was also a chance to get all my introductory and non-major classes out of the way so I can dive into the more hands-on classes and internships I did once I transferred over to Temple. I also used it as a chance to build my transferable skills, like learning how to interact with my coworkers public speaking, and I had an early exposure to journalism in my introductory to journalism class at DCCC. That's really interesting. I think it, in some ways, even though we had different majors, mirrors my own experience a little bit in that I feel like my time at DCCC definitely helped also give me those transferable skills, like, you know, communicating with people and just meeting people in my classes. I think, like you said, definitely helped me communicate with people better and I think probably increase my confidence as well. So you never know who you'll you'll run into in those classes. You may see them again. It's true. Actually, there are some people in my classes that I have, in fact, run into again in other places. And it's nice to have that sort of already established connection there. So do you have any advice for new communications graduates or new graduates in general? I would say always be open to new ideas and be willing to try new things. You never stop learning even after you graduate. And a lot of jobs in communication come from working in internships. So if you're continuing your education, you definitely want to look into internships at your four-year university. As far as what I wish I knew back then, I wish I would have looked into internships while I was attending DCCC, since it would have helped build up my resume. Additional advice I would give is to make as many connections and continue to utilize all the career resources and alumni associations at DCCC and your four-year university should you continue to further your education. Awesome. I think, yeah, definitely the internship thing is something, as a just recent graduate myself, I would definitely encourage people to find internships, or in my experience, I had a work study while I was at Delaware County. In fact, uh, the skills that I was able to learn from my work study even helped me get my first job. So would you be able to talk a little bit about what comes after DCCC? Yes. So after I graduated from DCCC, I transferred to Temple. In that Temple, I had an internship where I worked for my uh, local high school. And then several years later, I went back to Temple and I was able to get a master's degree in media studies and production, which is a more like specific form of communications where it's the emphasis is on broadcasting. And while I was doing my, uh, In my master's program, I interned for 93.3 WMMR here in Philadelphia for their morning show, Preston and Steve. And I was able to get some direct experience doing audio production and uh, doing some lot, do a lot of fun, different things with them, which was a really great experience. That's really cool. My parents, actually, they definitely in the past had listened to Preston and Steve. Before we wrap up, I have one more question that I'd like to ask you. Okay. Would you be able to explain a little bit more about your current job as a paginator for the Media News Group? So a paginator is a page designer for newspaper pages. So I'm responsible for using Adobe InDesign to take the stories from the online database that the um, editors and the, uh, the journalists upload their work onto. And I take it and basically place it onto the page. 
And I do this for about 40 different publications. Most of them are based here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but we have a few in upstate New York. And about a month or so ago, we added a few from Ohio. And also we have several in like the Detroit, Michigan area that we work on. That's pretty cool. I am curious, how long does it take to like do one page? Because if you're doing a lot of them, are you responsible for sort of just one, like one per a certain period of time? Each day I have a different a, a publication that I work on. It's over the course of about an eight hour day. So some days I'm waiting, waiting for them to upload the stories onto the database. Interesting. So do you get to see a lot of, you know, different stories from across Southeastern PA and like all the other areas? Yeah, I get to learn about all these different small towns that I would never have heard of otherwise. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's it seems like it's sort of like an unexpected experience to like sort of find out about the world. That's not like, yeah. you know, traveling or stuff like that, but like reading very specific local stories. So that's really interesting. That's that's the really fun part. But it's really cool to learn about all these different different towns and all the goings on. Really cool. Well, just as it's interesting for you to learn about all these individual stories in small towns in the newspaper, it was also interesting for me to learn a little bit about your specific story while I interviewed you today. So I would like to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Raven. It was really, really cool to be a part of your guys' project. Yeah, really cool to have you here. And with that, I guess I can say we're out. Hello and welcome. My name is Lushonda Stevens and I have here is a special guest. He is a DCCC alumni, Lance Bennett. Welcome, Lance. Thank you so much, Shonda, for, for having me. Um, I look forward to the conversation. Me too. Well, let's get right into it then. So the first question, tell me about your overall DCCC experience. My DCC experience was was amazing. Um, I attribute my experience there for for launching my career. I had several professors, including you know Dr. Susan Ward, who uh, who mentored me through several different processes, including the research process of learning how to write full length academic papers. I also had other mentors on campus, like like Dr. Kendrick Mickens where I was a student worker in his office um, at the time was the Office of First Year Experiences, where I learned about the, the higher education profession. And so um, I always attribute my, my current success and future success to, uh, to my time at, at Delaware County Community College. Well, you could say that you were a well-rounded student, can't you? Oh, yes, for sure. For sure. No doubt. I learned so much through my courses, and really those courses such as interpersonal communication, argumentation and debate, for example, really uh, helped me transition to my four-year institution, where I was able to not only complete some of my foundational courses in the major, but also develop those skills that were necessary to complete those upper level courses that, that all communication majors have to take once they transition to their four-year institution. Well, when you mentioned about argument and debate class, I did take that also. And I can say that that really opened my eyes when it came to panels and listening to the news and stuff like that. So I kind of got more in depth in what they were talking about and how people interacted with each other. So moving on to your employment status, what steps did you take after graduating to secure your first job in the communication field? Yeah, so I would say after graduating from Delaware County Community College, transferred to Eastern University where I majored in communication studies. Uh, My concentration there was interpersonal and organizational communication. Later I went on to get a master's degree in communication studies once again from Westchester University. And so when I was at Westchester University, I was doing a ton of research and learning how to conduct my own studies and um, learning how to publish research in academic journals. And so that really was the, the first step to, to me learning how to use those skills to find employment and to get a job. And so, you know, I would say my, my current field is higher education. So I don't necessarily work in the communication field per se, but 
I um, I use the communication skills and the knowledge from the communication research in my in my in my daily work. Now, when you say higher education, could you elaborate on that? Yeah, sure thing. So I work at the University of Texas at Dallas right now. I work in the Office of Institutional Success and Decision Support. Largely what that means is we use data to help the institution make decisions um, that are pertinent for our success and, and our survival in order to make sure that we produce the best product for our students. So we use student learning data. We use accreditation information. We use um, a ton of uh, we use market analysis, benchmarking data. We recompare ourselves against other institutions to see where we're at. And so this office ultimately uh, is responsible for using that data to present to executive leadership to help them make the best decisions possible uh, for the university. Interesting. That is very focused when it comes to higher education and what us students don't really know behind the scenes of what you guys do. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, right? I think that many folks don't fully understand the ins and outs of running a college or a university. It's so many pieces to the puzzle. And, and it's, it's our job as professionals uh, in the higher education space to support those efforts, right? So to make sure that students can have a seamless transition to class and a seamless transition to completing their degrees. And so I'm honored to be part of that process to, to make sure that uh, things work out in, in that regard. Well, it sounds like you do a pretty darn good job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Can you share an example of a challenging situation you faced early on in your career and how you overcame it? Yeah, I think uh, one of the one of the biggest challenges, I think, for any new professional is being able to work across age groups and, and differences. When I first started out, you know, one thing I found constantly, you know, was that my my more seasoned colleagues were not open to new ideas and different ways of thinking. And so, you know, the way that I overcame that really was to use the communication skills that I got from the college and, and beyond. I actually had coffee with several different of my of my colleagues. And so we would have coffee, we'd go out to lunch, we would just talk about the differences before you know, coming back to the table to figure out what we need to do to, to advance, you know, X, Y, Z issue. And so we were able to find common ground on, you know, on the matter itself while disagreeing on the tactics for, for how to solve that problem. That ultimately helped us to get to where we needed to be. And so, again, I always go back to the communication skills that I learned at Delaware County Community College. All those things were essential to my career and to me, you know, working with other people from different backgrounds. And as they say, communication is key. Yes, for sure. You know, and again, it's, you know, I always tell people that communication is, uh, is everything. Everything starts with communication. All of our human interactions are based upon communication, right? And so what, however that looks, whether that's through technology or through face-to-face or, or however. But at the end of the day, communication literally is every single thing that we do all the time, every day, 24-7. All right. So talking about communication, talking about working with other people, let's talk about community service. Tell us mm-hmm. about the Crowned Scholars Program. Yeah, so the Crown Scholars Program is a nonprofit here in Dallas, Texas, that aims to mentor uh, young Black males through academic processes and social processes. It really is a way to help young Black men to have a, have a male presence in their life. And essentially, I'm a mentor for a young man who is, uh, who's in seventh grade. Yeah, we, we spend time together. We, we talk about who he is, who he wants to be uh, once he grows up different things that he struggled with, all the things that I would argue that most Black boys struggle with at some point in their life, right? And so it's, it's just a really unique way uh, of giving back because several people throughout my lifetime gave back to me in this capacity. So it, it's also great to return the notion to other people. 
I thank you for giving back to our youth. I attended a youth program when I was in middle school and high school called The Garage at my hometown. And we had like a sisterhood type of group where I had a mentor and she would teach me things. She would be there to help me um, do my homework and all sorts of stuff like that. And I loved it. All right. We are on our last question. What advice can you give to DCCC students who are considering majoring in communication? Yeah, I would, I would say that students who are uh, considering majoring in it, I would say two things. One, it is extremely beneficial to your, uh, to your future success if you learn these skills you know, through your coursework. Number one. And number two, make sure that as you do your communication courses, that you actually form a relationship with your professors. Some of the professors who I interacted with at the college, such as Dr. Susan Ward, I still talk to today. And so that that relationship and that connection still still persists. So that's what I would tell you. You said it very well. <laughs> and Lance, <laughs> I appreciate you so much for being here with me. And I believe that you have an announcement to make. Yes, uh, I would like to announce the, the Lance K. Bennett Class of 2012 Scholarship Fund. Uh, this scholarship fund is for communication majors who demonstrate financial need. Uh, and really, the goal is to give back to the program that, um, that helped me get to where I am today. Guys, you heard it here. Apply, apply, apply. Well, that's about all the time that we have. Thank you so much, Lance, for being here. Thank you so much, Shonda, for having me. Um, I look forward to seeing this in production. And we're out. You've been listening to This Must Be Heard, brought to you by the New Media Lab and the Office of Athletics and Campus Engagement. Today's hosts were Raven Amaro and LaShonda Stevens. Our guests were Ed Betts and Lance Bennett. Dr. Dana Marie Gallagher, Raven Amaro, and LaShonda Stevens produced today's episode. LaShonda Stevens and Kara Oaks are our co-executive producers. Kara Oaks edited this episode and prepared our title cards. Victoria Colbreth and Samuel Larson designed our cover art, Indigo Fraser composed our theme music, and I am Raymond Porras, your announcer for this episode. Special thanks to the Director of Athletics and Campus Engagement, Allison Gleason, and our faculty advisor, Professor Marina Boyd. If you have an interest in participating in the new Media Lab, contact the Office of Athletics and Campus Engagement, or reach out to us on Instagram at dccc underscore newmedialab. Be sure to like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Thank you for listening.